<laughs> no. Hey guys, what's up? It's Travis with another episode of Finishing a Room in Your Basement. And as you guys can see, I finally finished the drywall in this room. I didn't film any of me doing the drywall and that's because all you really would have seen is me doing a terrible job, sanding like crazy, looking like a powder coated Darth Vader. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to apply a knockdown texture like this right here. That's great for me because it matches the rest of the drywall in my home, also covers up any minor imperfections I may have in my drywall. As you may have guessed, spraying drywall texture is a very messy process. So I need to cover anything that I don't want primer or drywall texture to get on. For me, that's gonna be the floor, the door, and the ceiling, which I plan to paint black later. And if you're planning to texture a room that already exists with furniture in it, get the furniture out of the room or move it to the center of the room and cover it in plastic. Turn off the power to the room and remove all of your light fixtures as well as your outlet and switch covers. Be sure to protect all the outlet openings with masking tape. To protect the floor, I'm going to be using rosin paper. All you need to do is roll it out and then tape the seams with masking tape. I should have done this when I was mudding this room and I didn't. It was a huge pain to clean up the floor afterwards, so I won't make that mistake again. Next, I'm gonna protect this door with some plastic and masking tape, but make sure you do it in a way where you can still open the door so you can get out. Don't ask me how I learned that. Next, I'll be using some more plastic and masking tape to cover the ceiling near the walls. In this case, I don't actually have that much ceiling to cover, so I'm just gonna cover all of it. To attach the plastic to the ceiling, I'll be using a combination of staples, masking tape, and just plain jamming it into holes. Don't let all my Hollywood special effects fool you. This is not as fun as it looks. When I'm doing this, I also like to cut around the light fixtures so I don't melt the plastic. I was a little bit wasteful when using this plastic, but honestly, I really don't care because it's pretty cheap. And now that I have my room fully protected, it's time to protect myself. Well, that's better. You guys like my suit? Well, I put a link to a suit just like this and all the other products I'm using in this video down below. By the way, here's a tip I haven't heard in other videos. If you're getting ready to spray texture on bare drywall like I have here, prime the walls first. If you plan to spray your primer, lightly wipe off the drywall dust with a soft broom or a towel. I would suggest wearing a respirator when doing this. If you're going to roll on the primer, you can leave the drywall dust. It can help fill small pinholes and imperfections. The reason I like to prime the bare walls is because the texture I'm about to spray on the walls will dry faster on the joints than it will on the bare drywall. You will end up seeing a slight difference in the final texture where all the joints are. It's subtle, but you can still see it even after painting. I'm spraying this primer with my Graco X5 spray gun. It makes very quick work of a room this size. I put a link to this spray gun down below. Once you're done spraying your primer, you may be able to see some areas that need to be touched up with some drywall mud. After you touch up those spots, reprime those areas. I actually did a pretty good job on this drywall. I am pleasantly surprised. Once the primer is completely dry, we can start spraying texture, but the first thing I need to do is get my texture gun assembled and ready to go. Make sure the adjustment valve is working properly. If your texture gun didn't come with this valve, I recommend adding one. It's great for making changes and pressure on the fly. Install the hopper with the included hose clamp with the handle facing towards you. Then install the compressor fitting. Be sure to use Teflon tape on the threads. This texture gun comes with three nozzles. I'm going to start with the medium sized nozzle for my test and I'll make adjustments as needed. It helps to squeeze the lever when installing the nozzle. For a room this size, I'm just going to use a pancake compressor. If I were spraying a larger area, I would want to use a larger compressor so it wouldn't need to run so much. I'm going to set the regulator to 30 PSI to start out. Now mix up a bucket of texture. Add the water first following the instructions on the texture package. Then slowly add the texture compound to the water. I'm using an actual texture compound, but I've seen some people use regular watered down joint compound for this. Mix until there are no lumps, then wait 15 minutes for the powder to soak up all the water, then test the consistency again. Add water or compound as needed to get the mix right. You're looking for a runny consistency, sort of like pancake batter. Mmm, delicious. No, but seriously though, this might be a little bit thick. 
a little more water. Now pour some of that pancake batter into the hopper and test your finish on a scrap piece of drywall. If it's too runny or too dry, add more texture powder or water and test again. Hold the nozzle about 18 inches from the test surface and spray slowly across the surface. You can touch up areas that need more coverage later. This test will let you know if you need to change nozzles, pressure, compound, consistency, or technique. After about 10 to 15 minutes, the texture you sprayed will start to haze over. That is when the compound is just dry enough to knock down without smearing. Don't wait too long or you won't be able to knock it down. After every stroke, wipe off your knockdown tool with a damp rag. Repeat this test as many times as you need to get comfortable and achieve the desired finish. This was still a little bit wet when I knocked it down, but I knew that because I'm in a little bit of a rush. But overall, I think that the gun is spraying how I want it to, and I think once it hazes over properly, it'll look perfect. So let's move on to the closet. So overall, I'm pretty happy with my test, so that means I can move on to the real thing. I'm going to start here in the closet because it gives me one more chance to dial everything in and practice before I start the main room. I spray the texture in a steady back and forth motion. Work in small sections and try not to overlap the spray too much or you'll get build up. Be sure to keep the texture gun perpendicular to the surface. Pay attention to the time. I only spray for about 10 to 15 minutes until I notice the first texture I sprayed starts to haze. Then I go to work with the knockdown knife. Just like washing paint dry. I'm using this large plastic knife. I like it because it covers a large area and has a lot of flex, so it makes it easy to apply even pressure. I put a link to one like this down below. You may also need a smaller drywall knife to get into tighter spaces. Well that went super well and I think I'm ready to do the rest of the room. The one thing I did learn is I think I might want to apply a little bit more texture to the walls in the main room. Other than that, perfect. Once the closet looks exactly the way I want, I continue with these same steps on the rest of the room. The most important thing is to pay attention to how long you've been spraying, so you don't miss the perfect window to knock down the compound you sprayed on the walls. When knocking down the texture, start at an edge and use light even pressure while dragging straight across the surface. Stop about two feet from the other end. Then go from the other end to carefully finish that last two feet. Remember to wipe off the texture knife after each pass. Each pass should overlap the previous pass by around two to three inches. Remember, this is called knockdown texture. It's called that because you're only knocking down the peaks of the texture you sprayed. I used about one bag of texture compound for a room this size, but keep in mind I don't have a drywalled ceiling. If you have a fully drywalled ceiling, you'll want more than one bag. I'm all done with the texture in this room and I'm going to let it dry overnight. It's the next day and the texture is dry and looks as fine as fried cheese curds on game day. So let's finish up with some more primer. Which means, time for that goofy suit again. I'm using my Graco spray gun again to apply the primer. It does a great job applying an even finish very quickly. It's also a lot easier to get good coverage on textured drywall with a spray gun. If you don't have one, use a roller with a long nap. After I'm done priming, I'm going to spray my ceiling black. So I'm going to leave my rosin paper on the floor and just remove the plastic from the ceiling. At this point, the primer just needs to dry and your walls are ready for paint. Dang, these walls look good. I hope yours turned out as good as mine. Next, I'll be painting my ceiling black and then painting the walls. So my next video will be installing light switches, light fixtures, and outlets. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and then subscribe and that little notification bell next to it so you don't miss my next video. We'll see you guys. To protect the floor, I'm going to be using rosin paper. All you need to do is roll it out and tape the seams. 